Over the years, the heroes in our favorite comics have occasionally brought a little extra oomph to their battles in the form of nifty weapons. While some superheroes tend to rely on the use of firearms, there's plenty of others out there who have invented strange and effective tools or tech to help them take down their villainous foes. That is exactly what we are examining today on Top 10 Nerd, counting down the top 10 insane superhero weapons. Let's jump in. Starting us off in at number 10, Arm Fall Off Boy and his limbs, actually. Okay, so. Let's begin our list with something rather silly. Arm Fall Off Boy, a Silver Age character, whose weapons consist of, I sh you not, his limbs. His whole shtick is that he can remove his limbs and use them as blunt objects in battle. So yeah, like, removing your arm, and then beating up a person with it. The character who was a member of the Legion of Superheroes was granted this power when he was exposed to Element 152, an anti-gravity metal. Or at least, that is what he claimed gave him his powers. He can detach or reattach his own limbs and then use them in combat as blunt weapons. So, essentially, he can beat the crap out of someone with his own arm, or leg, or I, ugh, whatever else. I wonder what kind of bruising this dude has to deal with. Imagine taking off your own arm and slapping someone with it. I mean, that's gotta sustain some damage, right? Moving on to number nine, Spider-Man's anti-magnetic inverter. This device was used by the web slinger against the vulture, whose wings at the time were made of a magnetic mechanism. So, how better to take him out than inventing a gadget that disrupts the one thing that the vulture uses to his advantage in battle? The anti-magnetic inverter, which looks like Spidey tore off the top of a tiny microphone and painted it, would nullify vulture's wings making him fall out of the air despite when Spider-Man first used it, he was holding on to Spidey at the time, up in the sky. I mean, you just web away. For whatever reason though, it never really became a more commonly used gadget of Peter's after its debut in Amazing Spider-Man issue 2 from 1963, although it did make an appearance after Vulture escaped prison with it no longer counteracting the villain's wings. It also made another small appearance when Spidey fought against Clash, Extremist, and a decade later when it was brought up in an interview that Peter had with Horizon Labs, toting the object as a tool he invented to disrupt magnetic harnesses. I mean, if you have it, use it, right? Get that job. Impress. And at number 8, Green Arrow's Chili. <laughs> oh, weapon or culinary feat? Hmm. We can't help but wonder if Green Arrow all over Queen's famous chili falls under both of those categories. Okay. Context time. So Ollie makes this special chili that's well known in the superhero community to be spicy AF. Now according to legend, only those with the strongest of digestive systems can digest it properly. In other words, Batman and arguably Superman, just because Superman seems to be struggling with it too when he's eating it. Ollie has used it to torment his fellow heroes, which really culminates in Green Arrow Secret Files and Origins Issue 1, where the full recipe was actually published, along with an image of Aquaman, Green Lantern, The Flash, and Martian Manhunter suffering while consuming it. The Flash even remarks that he finally has a weapon to use against Captain Cold. I mean, arguably, if you threw a bowl of hot chili at anybody, it would probably not be great for them. Superman stands in the back of the panel, blowing out his ice breath, whereas Batman says, could use more crackers. Personally, I'd like to think that Batman was secretly dying inside, but just like holding up a very impressive facade. Moving on to number seven, Batman's Truth Chamber. Yes, this is a thing that actually existed. A gadget of Bruce Wayne's that can be found in the Batcave, or at least it could be found in there in 1948 in Detective Comics issue 134. It's got a pretty self-explanatory name. It's also in the running for the strangest thing to exist in the Batcave, aside from all of Bruce's deep-rooted psychological trauma. No big deal. The Truth Chamber appeared in a story titled The Umbrellas of Crime, which yes, involved the penguin. Batman takes one of the penguin's goons, blindfolds him when he says he won't squeal on his boss, brings him to the Batcave, and then tosses him into this mirrored room that flashes a bunch of colors and causes the goon to trip out while Batman watches from behind a two-way mirror. It's then described as a chamber designed to crack a criminal silence by making him watch fearful faces reflecting his own guilt multiplied many times. Kinda seems unethical, Bruce. Just gonna throw that out there. The Truth Chamber would make a slight come back in Grant Morrison's Batman and Robin Run issue 16, in which Batman and villain Dr. Hurt spent some time in a mirror-lined room in the Batcave that is known as being an interrogation room where Batman once terrified victims into confessions. And at 6, Captain America's Photon Shield. Back in 1998, Captain America got a bit of an upgrade on his shield in issue 451 of his solo series. After being sent into exile, he got his red mitts on a new kind of shield, one that was an energy shield referred to as a photon shield. Essentially, it looked kind of like his original shield, except it was made entirely of energy instead of vibranium, and acted like a portable force field that he could wield. In addition to that, it was a much more flexible tool. He could make it transform into other objects, the likes of a sword, or even a rope. It didn't last long though. Cap would opt out and eventually return to his original shield, despite this one offering a plethora of nifty new tricks. I mean, 
Don't fix it if it ain't broke, right? And at number 5, the ultimate nullifier. We can't have a list of insane weapons without including the ultimate nullifier. And if you're wondering why this tiny but wildly destructive weapon doesn't land higher up on this list, it is because many of you likely have heard about this nifty little gadget in the past. And we're here to teach. So for those of you scratching your heads right now, what exactly is the ultimate nullifier? Well, described as the universe's most devastating weapon, it is a device that can completely eviscerate any target that the wielder chooses. It goes against the law of conservation of mass, and if the wielder doesn't have a powerful enough mind, it can destroy the individual attempting to use it. It requires an extreme amount of concentration, knowledge, and the proper mindset, and it is capable of obliterating entire realities and timelines. It can nullify a multiverse. Yikes. So it was eventually revealed to be an aspect of Galactus, which is why the World Destroyer feared it so much when the Fantastic Four busted it out in 1966. Fantastic Four issue 50. Also, it's worth noting that there have been two ultimate nullifiers kicking around the Marvel Universe over the years. The first is distinguished as the ultimate nullifier, whereas the second is an ultimate nullifier. Whether or not they are one and the same is a little debatable. The one owned by the character Titus is noted as having been assembled in accordance with the information deciphered from a Regalian recorder. So, the more you know. Moving on to something a little disgusting, in at number 4, Dog Welders Welded Dogs. Ugh. Dog welder. If you're unfamiliar with this character, here's the gist of him. He is a vigilante who fought with DC's Section 8 team and spent most of his free time trapping and killing dogs in alleyways. Yeah. Not really much of a hero now, is he? What's worse is that his MO was welding those deceased dogs that he murdered to the faces of his victims. Yeah, just imagine what that would look like. He would eventually be killed off and succeeded by a man who took up his mantle and his equipment, but still pulled the same gross shit. But could also communicate with dead dogs as puppets, since, like his predecessor, he was also a mute. Just, the dog welder just shouldn't exist. You don't gotta hurt dogs. It's not nice. My cute little pups. All they just want is love and loyalty. Moving on to number three, Wonder Woman's Chainsaw. Here we have a weapon that falls more into the that's really dope category than whoa, that shit is crazy category. Back in 2013, a DC MMORPG was released in beta testing. It was called Infinite Crisis, and the premise followed the members of the DC multiverse from all sorts of alternate timelines facing the brink of destruction and having to step up and fight against it. It gave us timelines that included Earth Atomic, a reality in which a third world war had wrecked the planet and a handful of heroes had survived, one of which was Wonder Woman. This Wonder Woman introduced in the game wielded a pretty cool weapon, the Chainsaw of Justice, a powerful melee weapon that let her chop through her foes like they were butter. She would operate as a melee assassin on her missions of trying to restore peace after the fallout of the nuclear firestorms. Now, unfortunately, the game was shut down in 2015, but there are still videos online featuring Wonder Woman and her Chainsaw of Justice in all of their glory. And at number two, the Encephalo Gun. Here we have another piece of tech that the Fantastic Four have utilized in the past, the Encephalo Gun. Created by Mr. Fantastic, this silly looking device was part of a ploy to have a mental duel with Doctor Doom, and its one and only appearance in Fantastic Four Annual Issue 2 from 1964. Now the gun has the ability to harness the mental energies of those operating it, with it sending the weaker of the two individuals into a limbo dimension where, apparently, there's no escape. When Doom and Reed use this device to have a mental duel, Doom thinks he's won when he sees Mr. Fantastic fade from sight. But then it's revealed that Reed drugged Doom, causing him to hallucinate and believe that he had won. This had led some comic historians to believe that the weapon might actually be a hoax created by Reed, a harmless prop that he built just to mess with Doom. And considering it was never brought up again, it kind of makes sense. What do you guys think? Was it a hoax or was it like a real weapon that for whatever reason just didn't end up working? Give us a shout in those comments below and let us know your thoughts. Personally, I think it was a hoax. And finally, in at number one, the most insane weapon of them all, arguably, Batman's shark repellent. <laughs> also more commonly referred to as the Cape Crusader's Shark Spray, this gem comes from the 1966 Batman live action film based on the television series starring Adam West as the titular character. Now in case you haven't had the pleasure of seeing this weapon in action, get ready, you're in for a treat. So <laughs> what have we learned? Batman has a spray that repels sharks. What is science? In that scene, a shark bites his leg, he punches it multiple times, and then when all else fails, he calls up Robin to toss him a canister of oceanic repellent bat sprays, which he keeps in his helicopter, a vehicle that is meant to soar through the skies and not go on water, one would assume. Also, the shark seemingly explodes when it impacts the water. The whole thing is the definition of insane. Man. If only oceanic repellent was more mainstream, Jaws would have been a completely different film. Sorry, 
dad joke, I can resist. All right, there we have it friends. What other insane superhero weapons can you guys think of? Give us a shout in those comments below and let us know. If you guys dug this video, give us a thumbs up, share it with a friend, and be sure to subscribe to Top 10 Nerd for more videos just like this one. We'd love it if you stuck around some more. In the meantime, thanks for watching. I'll catch you all in the next one. It's tough out here for a Spider-Man. We can't help but wonder if Queen Air eh, terrified victims into confessions. Oh, blame it on the 40s. Moving on to number three, Wonder Woman's Chainsaw. This one's for you, Liam. <laughs> wow, my brain just like farted there so bad.